the, the tone of the story throughout the trilogy has always been serious and um, intense, mm -hmm. um, whereas the game as a whole is more uh, playful, yeah, yeah. Uh, more lighthearted. Tone in Hitman 3 is uh, clearly more more dark and more brooding than the other two yeah. uh, chapters, which in a way brings the game as a whole closer to the tone of the story. story kind of becomes more prominent as you, as you go along, as you move through the, the chapters. In Hitman 1, the story was really just kind of a background presence, and, and I think many players didn't even take much notice of it. And then from Hitman 2 and onwards, it becomes much more uh, front and center. It's easier for us to inject a lot of main story references, also because a lot of things have happened. So it's not as mysterious as it was in, in Hitman 1, where you're outlining and introducing characters and, and trying to give the player a sense of what is this world of assassination. At this point, you know what the world of assassination is, and we can reference a lot more back and forth than we could in, in the beginning. In Hitman 3, the, the, the story and the gameplay is much more intertwined and so some of the big story moments actually take place in the game. 47 and Diana are out to end uh, what we started uh, years ago, which is to take down Providence, this uh, sort of mysterious organization that uh, exerts power in not necessarily great ways for the world. At the same time, 47 is on a somewhat unwilling journey towards emancipation, mm. uh, towards becoming his own conscience and making his own decisions, while Diana, on the other hand, uh, her principles and values are very much being put to the test in the face of ultimate power. And of course, we haven't seen the last of the constant no. Providence's Machiavellian controller. Yeah, and there are also some unexpected things, some, uh, some unexpected cleanup that, uh, that you will have to do.